Good evening. Welcome to the Coptic Cafe program. I'm Father Joseph, your host. Welcome to this hour of the program. Our phone number here is 818-342-3388. We welcome your calls and your comments. As we have been doing previously in the Coptic Cafe, we examine the news and we try to see the relevance of the Bible teaching and the church in light of what is going on in the news. And of recent month, we've had several incidents and scandals that come up, and it questions the very ethics of the people that are in high position and high power. And ethics begins when someone is young, it begins at home, and it begins at church. And this evening, I'd like to examine some of the events that have been happening in this country, as well as see the relevance of the Bible teachings and the ethics behind the decisions people in high places make. I am joined here in the studio this evening with Hatem Tadros. Hatem, thank you for being here this evening. Thank you, Bruna. Thank you for having us. And uh, also Ramon Tadros. No relations. <laughs> we have to mention that. We're just like brothers. But yes. Uh, I'd like to begin the program today and uh, we're not going to get into the big scandals that we've been hearing about uh, in the news, uh, whether it's uh, the scandal of the IRS scrutinizing uh, conservative uh, groups or the uh, AP scandal or the Benghazi uh, hearings that have been going on. Uh, in discussing all of this, we really want to get down to the fact that the Bible has produced the country that this country is today. Because the Founding Fathers founded America based on biblical principles. Even the atheists of them believed in higher power. And this country is the best revelation of the Bible teaching. For 200 years, the, com the country has been living with uh, Christian principles. And only of recent time, in the past 50 years or so, things started changing. And if we want to see what Christianity can produce, we can look to this country because it had implemented those teachings. But we have been undoing many of the good things that this con country has put, to, put forward. And with this, let me start with um, welcoming Hatem again and asking, Hatem, uh, what do you think about all the things that you hear in the news? Well, I think I, mean, I think it's, you know, as we hear more and more of these come out and as we, he, you know, see more and more of the, the scandals unfold in front of us, I think we, we do well to, to remember that ethics is what you do when you don't think anyone else is watching. And clearly these, um, these scandals happen because, you know, these are people in very high positions and, and they thought that no one else was watching and that no one else would find out. And I think that, you know, we as Christians have a very clear moral compass that tells us what is ethical and what is not ethical. Um, this compared to people who don't, you know, don't have a relationship with God, don't have a relationship with the Bible, and don't, you know, want to have a clear understanding in their minds of what ethics is and what is ethical versus unethical. Uh, Ramon, um, how have you reacted to these scandals, um, being a Christian and thinking of uh, Christian morals and biblical teachings? And you see that uh, very scary things that have been going on that could effectively uh, unravel the, what this country has um, become. Oh, <clears throat> I, I think it's, uh, it, it's not something that happened overnight. So this is something in the making, and some people uh, happen to see it sooner than others. But um, I think this is sort of the we're reaping what we we're sowing what we we've, we're reaping what we've sowed, so to speak, over the last forty years. And so unless we are focused again on, on bringing Christ back into our lives, whether it's in education, in careers, and um, just in every in everyday life in this country, like I said, it's like I said, it was founded on Christian principles, not just religious principles, but Christian principles, and the founding fathers. I think they would be terrified to see what it's become now. So it, uh, it doesn't take much to, to change. You have to start somewhere. Um, they started off, the group that changed the country, so to speak, started off uh, as a small group and then increased and wasn't taken seriously in the beginning. And now I think it's our turn to try to take some of the organizations back, like schools, universities, um, the media, per se, and, and, the, and the, uh, the news. Because a lot of the, lot of the stuff that's been happening 
has evolved over 40 years, and now we're just seeing the, the fruits of it. Uh, you've been watching the Coptic Cafe program. We welcome your calls here. The number is 818-342-3388. 818-342-3388. I'd like to watch uh, video number five. Uh, if we could please uh, roll clip number five and uh, look at uh, uh, what uh, some of uh, the think tanks are saying and how they analyze what's going on in uh, the country. So let's watch the clip together. Well, I don't think anyone can deny that we have a problem here. We're in an ethical mess. When I started working in the prisons 35 years ago, there were 229,000 people in prison. Today, there's 2.3 million. The financial crisis has rocked the world and shaken markets worldwide. Lenders were encouraged by the government to lend to less creditworthy buyers. Almost everyone in a position of financial authority embraced it. At the same time, they sold them short and hammered them like mad, raked in money. At every level, they were deceiving the people they were dealing with. Well, Wall Street not only saw no evil, but saw a great deal of virtue, which could be quantified in billions of dollars. That was the virtue of it. Why are we surprised when there's a lack of ethics in the lenders, Wall Street, government? It's an inescapable consequence of neglecting moral training. One of the things we need to do is resensitize ourselves to evil and resensitize ourselves to good. That was a time when I should have stopped and said, wait a minute, Mr. President, think about the consequences of this. But I did not. Self-righteousness is believing you're so good that you couldn't be compromised. And that's the kind of pride that's fatal. Business schools need to start thinking about right and wrong and ethics. But that's a very difficult challenge if the professors don't know how to teach it or think that way. Students simply were not aware of questions of moral philosophy. They say, well, ethics is following your own integrity or following your conscience. But what if you have a poorly formed conscience? What if you're a jerk? The problem is, in Harvard Business School, there's no fundamental agreement on the way the world works. And so you're reduced to discussing practical behavior. So truth has got to be knowable for there to be ethics. It would be hard to live a life as a consistent moral relativist, not making any kinds of moral claims. If you're a purely accepted moral relativist position, then you have no ground on which to stand to say why another person is wrong. The sure consequence of the attempt to liberate oneself from demanding moral norms and obligations is slavery. It's resulting in more harm to the society in general than anything else in my lifetime. It is unutterably destructive. How's that working for you? The eugenics is very much alive and well. It's back. And we now face the question, are we going to buy it or not buy it? A proper understanding of who the human person is. If we lose that and we are losing that, it becomes very, very dangerous. Quadriplegics like me have never fared well in societies that view life as dispensable. People are created equal and endowed by their created with certain equal rights. This is the fundamental ethic on which the Western civilization was built. You don't give human rights to people and you can't take them away. Uh, human rights are God-given. Central power, like all power, has to be checked. It has to be limited. Government must be under the moral law. And if the government violates those rights, it should be changed. My uncle did write and did say, if a law is unjust, it is our moral responsibility to resist the unjust law. And that is the basis of the civil rights movement. In the case of Tycho and innumerable other recent cases, it all went terribly wrong. Things uh, were pretty badly broken inside the company. When you lose a sense of trust, market economies fail. The dream is, if I can just achieve this much more, I'll fill that emptiness. The thing with money is it doesn't make you happy. Doing the right things, that's what makes you happy. We made a decision that we thought was going to cost us money. I don't think it's cost us a dime by being a good 
corporate responsible citizen. But the market also both requires and nurtures the virtue of service, hard work, and discipline, and diligence. It's got to begin in homes, and churches, and schools. At every level, we have to be working together to rebuild a consensus around a sound and coherent ethic. The family, religion, you know, culture, this is what has to be transformed. Our recognition of duty to do what's right, even in the face of powerful temptations and incentives to do what's wrong. That is the great goal of life. Am I doing what's right for other people who, like me, are made in the image and likeness of God? You know, the message that we give in our churches is very clear and very obvious that we adhere to the teachings and the principles of the Bible. But when we live in a society, Ramon, um, how, does, how, how does it work that we become desensitized to evil? I, I think they touched on the, on the idea of uh, moral relativism. I mean, I, I know it's a, it's a very uh, deep topic, but just to touch on it, um, if there's no basis for truth, then anything goes. And so, um, you know, w you know, we want to start moving forward and trying to build a society that's ethical, but yet uh, we, we're questioning whether a man's a man or a woman's a woman. And so, uh, you can't move forward if the fundamental if the fundamentals of life are not clear. You know, we we want to move forward, but we don't know if a baby deserves to live or die. Um, so, what, what some what a group of people has done, and I think it's it's a it's an ideology, and it's grown from from a small. Um, Sort of a, a swell, a swelled up from from a couple people, from Mark, from Karl Marx, and a lot of the communist uh, Mao and, and Lenin, and all these folks, to just a, a major ideology with, with really no leader, no de facto leader, and so you can't have an ethical society that doesn't understand that the family is the is is the foundation of society, that. Uh, in order for a child to to thrive, you have to have a male and a female father, uh, uh, father and mother. So, again, we unfortunately get desensitized because we get distracted from the truths, and we end up having to defend the most basic uh, elements of society, uh, you know, truths of society, that we can't move forward if all we're doing is defending things like, does God really exist? Uh, is a man a man, or is a baby a person? So, that's, that's a good way to to, to lose track of, uh, of of morality when you when you can't understand basics. Mm. Uh, Hatim, uh, what kind of bombardment uh, message that bombards our youth and young people that you become uh, numb to good and, and evil? Yeah, I mean, I think it was just as Ramon was saying, I, I think that the message of moral relativism and pluralism are always um, bombarding everything that we, we see and we hear on the media. Um, no one is absolutely right. What's right for her may not be right for her, for, may not be right for him. And so we don't have a basis from which to proceed. We don't have an absolute truth to go forward. And we in our church know that that truth comes from the Bible. And we know that the absolute truth is there and that guides us and gives us a clear moral, moral compass. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a shame that we have you know, some, some of these even voices coming from within our own church. At times we say we don't have to force our uh, religion on, on others or, or so on. But, uh, you know, are these same voices opposed to the evangelism that the disciples did in going and spreading the word of our Lord Jesus Christ? So um, we as Christians have a duty to bless this country by being present in it and by being fruitful with Christian works and showing what, what it is to be a Christian. Um, and I think from there we begin to build on what, what the moral compass and the clarity um, is that we really need. Um, part of the importance of what we're talking about and uh, adhering to the biblical um, principles uh, is the scandal of the IRS. Uh, this is very uh, familiar to everyone who pays taxes. We all know the power of the IRS and um, the infinite uh, resources they have when they want to bring someone into um, uh, their scrutiny. Uh, of course, the scandal is about um, uh, the IRS targeting uh, uh, specific groups, conservative groups, uh, right before the elections. Ramon, how, how uh, is that just politics as usual? People try to get away with what they can. Uh, is this harmful? Is it superficial? Is it deep? Um, you know, when I, it's actually, it's uh, 
superficial is the last thing, the, the, the furthest uh, way to describe the truth on that. Um, Richard Nixon, who was obviously um, close to being impeached and resigned in, in fear of being impeached, tried to use the IRS to sort of coerce people, uh, coerce people into, you know, you know, sort of punish his enemies, if you will, and he couldn't do it. The people in the IRS refused to do that, and so he got, he resigned or was, was pretty much almost impeached for a lesser offense. Um, what happened in the IRS is sort of the beginning of a tyranny. When we look at some a place like uh, maybe our motherland where things are not equal, there's no justice, uh, where one person may be treated one way for their, you know, for their faith and another person may be uh, discriminated against for their faith, this is exactly what happened. Um, the groups that were discriminated against was not 70, 30 or 80, 20. It was 100 to zero. Um, they asked them things like, what books did you read before we give you 501c3 status? They asked them, what kind of prayers do you begin your meetings with before we give you your 501c3 uh, status? And this is only Christian groups, by the way. There was other groups that applied for, uh, for uh, exempt, tax exempt status, other Muslim groups, for instance, that were not scrutinized in the same way. So there's no doubt that uh, not just conservatives, but Christians in particular were being targeted. And so to me, I mean, a lot of people think, uh, surprisingly to me, that the government is, is always, uh, could never do anything to harm you. Uh, you know, we go after companies like Tyco or companies who had schemes that stole a lot of money from people, yet if the government has this uh, scheme that's been going on for 60 years where people may not get Social Security in 30 years, people think, well, it's the government, you know, they can never harm us. So um, it really is scary that people sort of have a blind trust. Well, you know, they question the church <laughs> and they question our faith, um, but, but we don't question with boldness uh, people who are just like us, who are, who are sinners, who are... Who are um, you know, fallen creatures like ourselves from, from making mistakes. Um, I'd like to uh, watch uh, video number one, if we can roll clip number one, and uh, get your feedback on um, your comments after uh, we watch it. So uh, let's roll uh, video number one. And by the way, you're, uh, we welcome your uh, participation on uh, this topic. The number here is 818. Uh, three four two three three eight eight. We welcome your calls and comments. Please join us. Let's watch the clip together. Explosive accusations facing the IRS, and as we reported on Friday, the agency is accused of targeting conservative political groups during the 2012 election cycle. However, tonight, Fox News can confirm that the additional scrutiny went well beyond simply harassing organizations with the words Tea Party or Patriot in their title. We're also learning tonight that the IRS guidelines, including groups, have focused on government spending, debt, taxes, entities interested in making, quote, America a better place to live and even those critical of how this country is run and for the very first time the president was asked about these downright un-american taxpayer funded witch hunts and not surprisingly he immediately declared his innocence watch this I first learned about it from the same news reports that I think most people uh, learned about this uh, I think it was on Friday um, and uh, you know, th this this is pretty straightforward if in fact uh, IRS personnel engaged in uh, the kind of practices that have been reported on uh, and were intentionally targeting uh, conservative groups, then that's outrageous. And there's no place for it. Uh, and uh, you know, they have to be held fully accountable. Now, while the president claims he only found out about this late last week, members of his own administration were reportedly alerted that conservative groups were being targeted nearly two years ago. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, an upcoming report from the Treasury Department's Inspector General will reveal a top IRS lawyer named Lois Lerner was informed about this practice in June of 2011. However, almost a year later, after Lerner was briefed, her boss, the commissioner of the IRS, appeared before lawmakers in Congress and denied that this was taking place. Watch this. Can you give us assurances that the IRS is not targeting particular groups based on political leanings? First, let me start by saying yes, I can give you assurances. Um, as you know, we pride ourselves on being a non-political, non-partisan organization. And so uh, there's absolutely no targeting. This is the kind of back and forth that happens when people apply for uh, 501c4 status. And, and 
All right, joining me now with reaction, somebody who has been working behind the scenes for years to expose this abuse of power by the IRS and the Obama administration, nationally syndicated radio talk show host. We call him the great one, Mark Levin. We dragged him out of his bunker tonight. Great one. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Sean. All right. That comment that we just played by the head of the IRS denying that this was taking place, even though they knew about it a year prior, that, that was one day later you, through your organization, the Landmark Legal Foundation, filed this report that really got this ball rolling with the Inspector General's office. So the timing of this was very key. Why don't you walk us through how this all got started? Well, first of all, I just heard you play the clip of the president say, if this is true, did he not hear his own IRS official on Friday confess and apologize to the facts, the limited amount of facts that are on the table. Of course it's true. The IRS just said it's true. That You're watching the Coptic Cafe program. The phone number here is 818-342-3388. Uh, Hatim, what's your reaction to this video? Well, I mean, I think the, the whole scandal is, is very, very serious. I think that, you know, people who um, get a letter from the IRS you know, the reaction is they may not sleep at night. This is a very worrisome thing that, that, that happens. Um, I think the timeline is important, too. I think that some of these groups that were conservative in nature started in 2009, in April of 2009, on tax day, on April 15th. About a year later, in April of 2010, they became a more serious threat. These rallies were not just loose um, aggregations of people. They were serious. They were demonstrating on the National Mall. They became a threat, and during April of 2010, there were confirmed meetings of people getting together in the IRS and saying, let's begin doing this, let's begin targeting them. So this, in the lead up to the 2010 elections of November of 2010, um, and even in those elections, the, there was a, a clear backlash against, against government. So I think the timeline is clear, and uh, it was deliberate, and I think that the... the uh, the practices are very serious, and, and as Ramon was saying, they were asking even to the level of prayers and, and the context of the books that they were reading. So I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a really terrible uh, scandal. Um, Ramon, um, I don't mean to judge anybody because um, we don't know the people and the person, so we're not talking about specifics here, but uh, generally speaking, what does it take for someone uh, in a high power, in a powerful place, resign the responsibility and uh, and basically put aside their ethics and their integrity and say uh, I'm going to do this for the person I want elected to be the president for what I think is right um, what, what how does that happen sir when are you asking from the perspective of how, how do the leaders get to this level of corrupt yes uh, okay so so I, I mean I, I think it's there's a famous quote obviously most people know it uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely and I think one of the senators said it. He said he believes this president or some of these people are just drunk with power. And that's what happens. A lot of, a lot of the great civilizations had the greatest militaries on earth, but they ended up taking themselves down because of just pure corruption and, and uh, just lust. I mean, it's an insatiable hunger for power. And at some point, uh, I do believe certain people believe they're above the law. And we know this very well from where we, where we were uh, where from is that once the government is in full control, the, the bigger the government, the smaller the person, the smaller the citizen. And so we know that in Egypt, for instance, we have on our IDs, we have our faith, our religions on there, you know, our employment status, our academic, you know, our, our uh, educational levels, everything's on there. So we do get treated that way based on things that are, that are unfair. You know, you know, some people, uh, you know, want to be Christian but not have somebody judge them in, in their career based on the Christianity. And so what you saw here is basically people being judged for things that should not come into play. You know, I personally, um, you know, I, I'm, there's no, I don't um, mince words about it. I am a conservative Christian and the IRS really gave me some trouble in the last two, past two years. I mean, really bad trouble with a bill that's over $45,000 needlessly. And um, a lot of people thought, you know, I'm being, uh, you know, conspiracy theory. I'm, uh, you know, having some, uh, you know, uh, you know, fantasy about being being targeted for for this reason. And other than maybe one news network like Fox News that began this thing, the media would, didn't want to touch this. And even after the IRS admits they made a mistake, our president says if it happened. And so 
I, I don't know how much more evidence there has to uh, there has to be for people to say, you know, there has to be checks and balances here. Uh, if the person who's collecting my taxes wants to punish me, you know, they, there should definitely be an uprising of some sort, of, an upswell of, of anger. Um, you know, um, there's a perplexing um, issue before us here. Uh, the Bible is the reason for all um, uh, moral progress in the world because the, the Bible has taught us some uh, incredible um, uh, teachings such as uh, we are all created equal, we all answer to, to one God. And uh, many of the universities that were founded and started in America were founded based on biblical um, uh, values and the foundation value of the universities is biblical. Uh, these um, universities have established themselves, have grown, have become the powerhouses that they are now. And now they are producing the, the most, the nuttiest and um, uh, most absurd uh, ideas and philosophies. Uh, and it's kind of ironic that you have this solid foundation with the solid building blocks to get you up to be 100 years old or 150 years old. And then what you produce today is a kind of like, um, uh, relativism where there's not absolute right and wrong. Uh, Hatem, what, what do you think about the university's role in producing workforce and leaders that are capable of putting aside their values? Yeah, when I think it's very concerning. I think it goes back to something Ramon said earlier that, that we are now reaping what we have sown 40 years back. Something started from the 70s and uh, you know it's this wave of liberalism and uh, a, a departure from religious values and a departure from conservative values in our schools, in our universities. It's very difficult for conservative uh, professors to get positions in, in non-Christian universities. Even the ones that claim to be Christian now are departing. We've got Biola University having an LGBT program. I mean, these are uh, far and away departures from everything we know to be Christian, solid Christian principles. And, and these universities are ultimately leading to the adults of today that are now taking powerful positions in corporations and in government. So I think that um, we really do need to reverse um, this wave of what's going on beginning with our schools, beginning with the lower levels of our schools and up through the, the universities. And I think that there are some beacons of Christian thought that are still buried in, 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 in conservative schools that really need to to be grown out that are truly conservative, that really need to be nourished and grown, and, and we you know, need to find those and, and seek them out and, and really uh, participate and send our children there and, and really keep them going. Um, you're watching the Coptic Cafe program. Thank you for being here with us on Logos TV. The phone number here is 818-342-3388. And I'd like to address the blessed viewers to um, uh, at least give thought to the conversation that we have here. I don't know anyone who uh, is not appalled by the scandal of uh, the IRS targeting any specific groups. But I'd be curious, um, would anybody be uh, okay with, the, since it's been done to a group that maybe I don't belong to or you don't belong to, uh, or do we have the sense of urgency that if this happens to one group, it can happen to another? And this being a great country that it is, and uh, uh, the way society has been advancing for uh, the past 250 years almost, uh, it's kind of uh, disheartening to see it back in away from advancing from being a first world country uh, to fall into these kind of corruptions. Uh, have, have we really gotten to a point, uh, Ramon, where uh, there's no such thing as right and wrong? Oh, but I, no, actually, I, I think the St. Anthony's quote, sh you know, just uh, rings so loudly in today's society where th there is actually a talk about right and wrong, but I think it's upside down. So, um, you know, for instance, the, the gentleman that uh, made a video a couple of years, about a year ago now, and, uh, you know, being as distasteful as it may be, it didn't take our government, you know, the president, uh, minutes or maybe hours to get on and publicly demand that this person be found and, 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 you know, how despicable this act was. And we heard about it at the United Nations and at the highest levels of government. 
Um, when the IRS scandal broke, this, it's been two years. We don't have one name of one person responsible. And so um, what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right as far as you know, what we pursue. Uh, the, 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 the gentleman from Fox News uh, was, was being, had his phone tapped for doing a, a story that they considered possibly maybe espionage. I mean, that's, that is treason. That, that's punishable by death, you know, by hanging, as a matter of fact. And so they pursued that a media reporter, done nothing wrong, and they, they went to three different judges to get a subpoena to, to go ahead and go after his personal emails, his, his, his home personal emails, his uh, phone records, everything else. And yet we had a, two gentlemen in Boston who were, we were told by Russian uh, intelligence and by FBI intelligence that these people might be potential terrorists and they were left alone until they actually committed their acts of murder. So why didn't the administration who found the gentleman who made the video so quickly and arrested him uh, and found a Fox News reporter who happened to be doing his job and tapped his phone was not able to find a couple, you know, a couple of guys or as they say, people who are responsible for this. So to me, I don't think it's an accidental uh, act that, that we're not seeing truth uh, prevail. They're, they're intentionally hiding, tr suppressing truth, and just sort of, and just sort of uh, uh, pursuing other things that are that are irrelevant. Um, hi, Tim. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, one point there is, is, is so you heard you know, the the video and the and the president said I found out about this just like everybody else through the same media reports that that you heard, but there are confirmed. Um, reports that the White House Chief Counsel and the White House Chief of Staff were informed of this. And so it's very, very difficult to believe that those two would not have reported it to their boss, who is who is the president. So I think there was an aha moment for the president um, in, in that last video. There's also um, reports of sort of where these offices or where the targeting was occurring in several geographies. And so it wasn't one manager who was sort of overseeing all of them who may have been um, you know, pr providing this sort of uh, sour direction for, for his people. But each of them had an individual manager, and they all reported up centrally to a director. So I think that, you know, when, as we see this unfold, we're going to find out that this, is, this really took place at very high levels. Anything that had the word Obama, anything that had the word progressive in it was streamlined in 401c3 or 501c3 status or 50, you know, I don't know what the code 501 is. 501c3. Was granted almost, you know, within, within, within three months. Uh, there are people who are still waiting three years later after having applied for this. So um, it's, it's, it's very troubling. Um, this uh, reminds me with uh, Isaiah uh, when he said, Woe unto those who say to good evil and to say to evil good. Um, I want to um, basically to present the blessed viewers that um, who we vote for and who we put in power matters. And uh, we should really be careful with our own convictions and morals, uh, adhere to the biblical teachings. And uh, when, we, when it comes to our own actions, to act uh, honorably, uh, to have ethics at work, uh, at home, in the church, uh, it's very easy to lie. It's very easy to lie. I, mean, um, I think exactly what you like said is, for instance, Ronald Reagan was quoted as saying, and I may paraphrase it here, but he was quoted as saying, there are answers to all of life's problems within the Bible. This, this kind of, maybe, and maybe some people may, may say something they don't really mean, but he, when he spoke this, he didn't speak it publicly, uh, you know, at a big gathering. He spoke this candidly, didn't have a problem with him, you know, being recorded. But um, exactly, who, who we vote for, uh, elections have consequences. When the president said, I want to fundamentally transform this country, I, I don't know what part of that didn't shake people up and say, why would you want to transform a country you love? You know, you, if you love your wife, you don't want to transform her. If you, if you have a friend, you don't transform them, you know. And so just that, just that statement alone uh, probably told us a lot about how the future is going to be. And now we're, again, we're, we're, we're seeing the, the fruits of that. So he, he also, uh, ironically, at, at a graduation uh, about a week or two before the scandal broke, made a statement saying, Reject the voices that tell you that there's government tyranny at every corner, lurking at every corner. It's very ironic because government tyranny was just lurking around the corner from that speech, which, which he made at, a, at an all-black college. So I, I find it just uh, the, the hypocrisy is, is, is at an extremely high level. Um, let's uh, move on to the next um, scandal that I'd like to get your um, reactions to. But uh, in all of this, I'm pointing out to the fact that the Bible uh, uh, is not contradictory. 
the Bible does not have uh, a speck of um, ill uh, advice or um, foolishness. Uh, if you just live w with honor, honesty and integrity and adhere to the Bible, you wouldn't have um, uh, any of these scandals. The next one uh, is uh, video number two. If we could um, uh, get clip number two ready. Uh, this is again Fox News with Sean Hannity and uh, Mark Levin uh, discussing the AP scandal. Uh, this is a scandal where um, the legal department targeted uh, reporters uh, supposedly for leaks. Now we, we know that uh, uh, national security is at hand and all of that. This is of course uh, the number one priority, <coughs> but it's never been in the history of this country that you go after the reporter reported the leak, you always tried to prosecute the person who leaked right. the uh, unauthorized information. So let's watch uh, video number two together and we'll come back and comment on it. All right, Mark, let's go for this new story. It broke on Drudge earlier today and that is the government tapping the AP, their phone records. They've been doing it for months. You got Benghazi, you got the IRS scandal, now we got this invasion into people's privacy. What do you make of it? First of all, I want you to think about this. Apparently, they tapped 20 lines for the Associated Press, affecting about 100 reporters. You know, I was a chief of staff to an attorney general in the Reagan administration. I can promise you, if we had done that, that would be the end of everything. And it's one thing to be doing leak investigations, but that is such a broad attack on a news agency. I've never heard of such a thing. And the fact of the matter is, Sean, that the media need to understand that when some of us are trying to defend the Second Amendment and the Ninth Amendment and the Tenth Amendment and the Fourth Amendment and the Fifth Amendment, the Bill of Rights generally, the Constitution generally, the First Amendment, free speech, the First Amendment, religious liberty, and the media throw in with this administration and basically are the Praetorian Guard for this administration, the day would come and the day has now come where freedom of the press is under attack and this is the extent to what we know. There may be more, but the tap reportedly 20 lines involving 100 reporters and God knows what else that they were doing with the AP is a disgrace. And well, Eric Holder had to have known about it and had to have approved it. Well, you got not only the, you got the freedom of the freedom of press, but you got freedom of speech, patriot, Tea Party, Constitution, government waste, fraud and abuse. All of a sudden, now you become a target of the IRS. Same with associations here. When you look at the questions that on, on the IRS case, he, I, I guess the question I have is a political question because I, I but I, I personally don't even think this is political. I think this is a matter of fundamental fairness. For the American people and whether or not they're going to care because when Benghazi comes up they drag their feet they delay they misinform then when finally information comes out then they say it's a long time ago I would expect in all of these scandals probably the same strategy would be used no this is a matter of big government tyranny is what it is and the left embraces it and they have this mentality it's perfectly fine when somebody else's ox is being gored but when it's theirs then suddenly wait a minute you're not allowed to do this uh, the, the, this, this, this is the problem the government's getting bigger and bigger and power is more and more centralized and Obama whenever there's a problem he has these excuses well that's an independent agency well that's low level while well, they're playing politics folks it's real world the IRS is, is out of control. The Department of HHS with Obamacare is out of control. The Agriculture Department with, uh, with the scandal with the payoffs to different groups is completely out of control. The Interior Department and oil drilling, the government is big, it's bloated, it's getting more and more powerful, and if you believe in liberty, you better start paying attention. Well, and we better this look is at the why IR Congress has a job and they better do it. Uh, Hatem, what do you, what's your reaction to this video about the AP scandal um, that broke out a few days ago? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think it's shocking. I mean, I, there are several places where the press is referred to as the fourth branch of government, sort of checks and balances with the press being there to check the other three branches uh, of government. So this is a serious intrusion on the checks and balances that we have in our Constitution. I think that once, you know, taking folks back to the time of the election in 2008, um, the words that were used were that the media was fawning over this president. He was a celebrity to them. They were 
enthralled by him, and, 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 and it was, uh, you know, a very, very nice relationship with the press. Um, bring that now to today, I think that, the, you know, tapping of 100 uh, reporters of, of, their, uh, of their communications, I mean, I think if you're investigating a leak, you tap one reporter, you don't tap 100 reporters. So I think that this was, um, you know, an, an effort to really undermine that, that fourth branch of government. I think I'll, I'll say one, one other thing is there was a meeting held uh, shortly after the, this um, scandal came out that was in the Oval, uh, it, was, it was in the White House, it was not in the Oval Office. And it was only held with a subset of the press corps that was the liberal set of the press corps. And sure enough, the next day after that meeting came out, uh, rather than hearing about all these scandals, things were a little bit more favorable on the other side. So I think that he and his administration have done a good job up until now of, of sort of courting the press and making sure that everything is printed as sort of towards, towards him. I think the minute that that started to taper off, I think they, there's been some serious actions taken to help get that, get that back going again. So we really um, know very little about what maybe what the depth of this is just because of the... the the relationship that the media has with with this administration and with you know democratic administrations in general, and that's uh, one interesting thing uh, to bring up, Ramon, and that is um, it's not exactly that the media is very uh, harsh or scrutinizes everything that the administration does or uh, at least what's going on in the country nowadays. Um, so uh, it's not like um, there were a lot of um, enemies, a lot of attacks from the press side. Uh, yet, we have this targeting of uh, a narrow uh, subset of, of the media, namely Fox News and reporters in that organization. Um, has it ever happened in the history of this country that uh, the president or the administration enjoyed 100 percent of, of the media? or? Is this just uh, uh, unprecedented? Is, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, but but you notice, Abuna, that uh, you know it's like that that old that old saying. You know, first they came for the Jews. You know, so that this whole attack on the media began really a just attack on one one media outlet. And you think you know if you have you know ABC, CBS, NBC, uh, CNN on your side, you'd be comfortable enough to to get your message out. But he, you know, the administration was not comfortable with, with just having, you know, 99 percent. They, they really were upset about Fox News and they actually waged a war on Fox News and, and said things like it's not a real news network and, and things like that. And Is uh, it true that they uh, shopped around for judges to... Absolutely. They, they, you know, uh, Eric Holder, who's supposed to be the, the top, the top uh, gentleman at the Justice Department, had three judges turn him down for a subpoena. Uh, to, to get information about James Rosen from Fox News. It was, a, it, was a, it was an upstanding character, by the way, and he was smeared throughout this process. And so um, the fact that you have to go to three different federal judges to get your wish shows you how much corruptness and how, how it runs rampant. And if you notice, Abuna, um, the media has done a marvelous job for this president, and still he's not able to contain the amount of corruption that's, that's within this administration. Um, if, if you notice, for instance, um, our previous president, his grades were leaked. So his transcript somehow leaked in the media. This president's transcripts are watertight. The, the media doesn't have an ability to have those leak. Um, Abu Ghraib, that happened in Iraq, that leaked. You know, but, but the fact that we have more dead soldiers in Afghanistan under this administration, we don't even know that people have forgotten there's more wars going on now than there was eight years ago. Um, and, and things like that. So when, when the media decides to pursue stories, and, and they really sort of play up a story like the Catholic Church uh, scandals, things like that, and they ignore real news, the media in a, in a, has a lot of control. And so if the AP thought, you know what, they couldn't come for us, they're going after Fox News, I think the AP just learned that, you know what, the devil has no friends, per se. So, you know, if they, if, if they watched Fox, Fox News get trounced and, and get, uh, you, know, you know, sort of attacked mm -hmm. by this president, they're next. You know, if, if you don't fall in line with the, with the administration's, uh, you know, talking points, you, you're, you're on deck. So I think they've learned the hard way. And it, this is completely against Christian principles because Christ asked the disciples to proclaim truth. He didn't say specifically talk, give them certain points and just said, go out there, and proclaim the truth. And, um, you know, show no partiality. And, and so even in the media, that's how it's supposed to be. And in a democracy, that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a vigorous debate. Uh, of, of issues. And so that's how Christ, Christ never 
you know, uh, you know, sort of shut people up for questioning even his authority as, as Lord and Savior. So uh, the fact that we have a media that's completely one-sided, I think, is, is, is sort of uh, a result of its, of its own creation. Uh, you're watching the Coptic Cafe program on Logos TV. Thank you for being here with us this evening. And the phone number here is 818-342-3388. We welcome your phone calls, uh, questions, comments uh, to get in on a, con a conversation. Uh, Hatim, I know some people who are really turned off. Uh, the news is depressing. Uh, they are very disappointed at uh, what is going on in the country. Uh, and many people shape their um, views and their votes uh, based on what they hear in the news and get their, their information in a quick way. Um, so what chance do those people have? And the second question for either you uh, uh, two gentlemen is what can be done for the average person to get well informed? Well, when I think they're turned off with good reason. I think that when they see these scandals, uh, you know, clearly you, you feel like you're out of, you, you don't have any control or you don't have any oversight or any, um, you know, way to check the government. And I think that that's, um, you know, a, a disservice to the to the process entirely. I think that people need to understand that their vote does matter. Elections do matter. People we put in office are going to behave um, based on their previous policies and based on what they say, or we have to make that assumption. And I think that we have to be very diligent and, um, and, and vetting of all of these people before we cast our votes for them. I think one other point is that we need to vote based on conservative principles. We don't vote based on party. There are people in the Republican Party who are pro-homosexuality and, and promote those policies. Those people um, don't fall under our definition of conservative. And the, therefore, those people can't just be blanketly elected because they fall under a Republican Party platform. I think that each candidate needs to be taken for what they say and that their conservative values need to be under, fully understood before we cast a ballot for them. Now, if we take the approach of just staying home and not doing anything, then we get what we get, which is you know, where, we are, where we are today. Uh, Ramon, uh how can uh, someone, um, an average person who's got, uh, be it uh, a young professional who's just um, starting out their life, uh, maybe married, a couple of kids, uh, going to work, responsibility of the home, uh, or a college student who's just busy with exams and all of that. Um, the media does not cover these things. Uh, in a couple of years or three and a half years, we'll have the presidential elections. All of this will be forgotten. Uh, it hasn't been really covered by uh, the national media in the first place. Uh, so uh, I almost um, find it um, understandable, not excusable, but understandable for someone to show up to the voting booth and uh, say, what's the problem, you know? Yeah, you know, when I, 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 hate to, I hate to really be a little bold on this and harsh on the statement, but I think people who really only worry about themselves, it, it's selfishness. So you worry about what affects me personally. So if my career happens to be whatever. Uh, but right. that's, that, that's right. not so, so I mean, so I, mean, I mean. So I mean being informed about society doesn't mean just being informed about what affects you directly. I don't mean that. I mean right. they're just too busy to pay attention to the news in general. And then... Um, well, I, I'll give an example of when I, I, have, I, I know somebody who was in, that, was in that realm and they were too busy to be up to date on news. And uh, the one time they actually cared is when I talked to them about the fact that they had kids in private school. And I said, do you realize you get zero tax write-off for that while other people can write off, you know, the strangest things? And that you, you know, you're paying for two spaces in a public school while, you know, you're paying your 100% share in somewhere else? And so that's when he got involved. And that's when he said, hey, why, why, why am I paying all these taxes for two positions in the school district when I have two kids in, in private school. And so that's what I, that's what I mean is, is I think people will say that I'm too busy when they believe it doesn't affect them. If I pay, you know, federal income taxes, state income taxes, local sales taxes, DMV taxes, you know, property taxes, and, and every kind of fee on the freeway and everything else, you know, if I'm comfortable, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about being informed about why I'm paying all these taxes. But again, you go back to biblical principles and look how simple Christ made it for us as far as you know, what we give sort of to charity, and it's simple 10%. Um, and that's, you know, 
what, what's ironic is at one point in this country, it wasn't a crime to speak about political issues that affect our country within the church. And it was the tax system with the whole 501c3 and, and sort of baiting them into, hey, if you want to re re retain that exemption, then you better keep your mouth shut in church. Because before, before the 1930s or, or 20s, the, 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 the pulpit was a great place to, to talk about what kind of tyranny is happening. And so what they end up doing is, in the name of, in the name of a sort of uh, tolerance and, and, uh, and equality, they say, or you know, uh, church and state, separation of church and state, which is a fallacy, to say, you can't speak about truth from, from the pulpit. So I think we can't separate our lives and say, this is my personal life, and this is politics. That's a, that's a fairly foolish uh, way to, to, to sort of look at these uh, issues as, as separate entities. Um, I want to, we have just a, a few minutes left uh, in the program. I want to turn to the last scandal that was in the news, um, big scandal. Yeah, there I was going to say, there's a lot, lot more that we haven't covered. Yes, there's a lot more that goes on uh, that we don't know. Uh, and this is this one has touched the Coptic Church specifically, uh, and that is the Benghazi debacle. Uh, when the attack on the embassy, which resulted in the um, killing of four uh, Americans, one of whom is the ambassador to Libya, <clears throat> uh, it was immediately uh, announced that this is because uh, a movie that was made by a Coptic Christian, and I could not believe my ears when I heard the words, <coughs> because we never hear about... Um, uh, a Muslim terrorist or uh, a black rapist or uh, a redneck uh, um, bank robber. You just hear about a robber, uh, uh, a rapist. There's no label be before it. And um, of course it, it affected us because we are the Coptic Church. So to say Coptic in the news and specifically by the president, I was surprised to hear him uh, utter that much details so few hours right after the attack. And today, almost one year later, this was back in 9-11, 2012, uh, we're almost, what, uh, about uh, eight months later or so, and we learned that this was not the case. Right. And that they clear. knew all along that this was an orchestrated, organized Islamic terrorist attack right. by the fanatics, uh, and yet they shoved this story about uh, a movie that was made by a Coptic Christian down everybody's throat. Let's watch clip number three, uh, clip number three, uh, and I'll come back and get your reaction to it, please. Well, I, uh, to me, this is very simple. The American people, I would think, deserve the truth. The families of these four dead Americans deserve the truth, not a, 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 a lies that were spun uh, after the fact to protect themselves politically. I think we deserve the truth about the IRS. The press, I would think, would want to know the truth about why they're tapping the phones of of reporters, uh, it seems to me Democrats would want the answers to that, wouldn't they? Well, look at this Benghazi matter. We all know, even people who are paying half attention, that there were 12 iterations of the talking points. Why are the talking points important? Because that was the sheet of music the administration was going to sing off of, whether it was in front of Congress, whether it was to we the people, whether it was in any other forum, and it was a flat out lie. They didn't work at this to try and get the facts straight. They worked at this to try and redact the facts. And the facts were that they knew it was an Al-Qaeda-related group that attacked our compound, that murdered our ambassador and three other men, and they're still lying about it. Obama today is still talking about a video which had absolutely nothing to do with it. And so the question is, are we going to have a select investigative committee where resources are focused and drag these people through subpoenas, and if they don't honor them, hold them in contempt, and if they lie under oath, prosecute them for perjury? Or are we going to keep chasing our tails on this? You're watching the Coptic Cafe program. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, the phone number here is 818-342-3388. Uh, we have Mike on the phone. Mike, welcome to the Coptic Cafe program. What's on your mind? Uh, I just want to say that the youth are being, uh, they're being brainwashed by what they're watching on the, on the, from the media. And um, this is going around the school. This is rampant. And among the teachers, too, and they just come on the youth, and they begin to tell the youth, uh, you know, that Republicans are bad, and Republicans are not seen as bad. And they're now being, you know, run out of, run out of, uh, out of the offices, which I believe is is crazy. Uh, Michael, how old are you? I am 16. 
16, God bless you for paying uh, attention, being interested in this. Uh, and I just want to um, comfort you with uh, this thought. Uh, the Bible has never taught us to look for the world for answers or for comfort. Uh, so we are doing our best here uh, because we believe in the second coming. We believe in the resurrection of Christ. We greet one another and say Christ is risen. And uh, we know the truth. We, we love the Bible, we love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all we are trying to do is share this message with others in the world if they should accept it. With that, let me ask you this. Um, how, uh, how do you react or how does one react when a teacher in a classroom with captive audience starts spewing uh, hate messages against uh, uh, biblical teachings, basically, or people who have conservative Wait, ideas? Sorry, sorry. Can you can you share with me what happens when a teacher starts talking bad about conservative ideas, uh, traditional right. families? Right, right. Uh, uh, when 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 a teacher starts to speak bad about conservative ideas and, and things like this, the students will begin to support the teacher, and maybe the one or two Republicans left in the class because uh, I I come from Los Angeles. It's a very democratic uh, uh, city. And the people around me are very democratic. They're, uh, most of them are Democrats, and so most of the teachers are Democrats. And I, I specifically go to a Catholic private school, and they themselves are mostly Democratic Catholic. And uh, so they'll begin to just shoot down on me whenever I, I speak for my Republican, uh, you know, beliefs. And when I when I start to speak about uh, Islam and it's, it's you know it's destruction. And it's hate, and 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 all this and this different things and things that concern gays and how it, in the Bible it tells us that gays are, are not that being gay is not good. The teacher, I'm in a Catholic school, and they'll just come and start shooting me down for you know for for their for their democratic uh, views. Uh, Michael, um, God bless you. I want you to know that uh, John the Baptist was. Uh, a lone voice in the desert, but he was not the wrong voice. So to be an only voice, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're the wrong voice. So God bless you. Keep on uh, going. And I hope you're uh, offering your message with love. And uh, also, if I may give you a small advice, uh, please uh, try to be specific with your uh, vocabulary. And don't broad brush uh, a group of people. If you're uh, speaking about extremism, then do say that, the extremists. Uh, that way your arguments can be taken as valid and not as you are uh, generalizing. And I invite you to watch the second hour of the program tonight. We're going to discuss something that has to do with the high schools here in the um, uh, state of California, which might start taking effect uh, nationwide. So thank you for calling, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to say, Michael, you're, you're much wiser and more aware than I was at your age. So God bless you yes, and, and indeed. stay active. Indeed. Hatim, uh, your reaction to uh, the video we just saw. Yeah, so I think that anybody who is a Coptic Christian who is sitting and watching this and doesn't take a personal offense to this is not paying attention. I think that this was a premeditated, thought-through effort to blame the Coptic person and the association with the Coptic Church in the place of blaming their own self and the administration's failures to protect its embassy. And I think we've talked about this before. Um, you know, where should the repercussions fall back? Should they fall back against us and against our foreign policy, or should they fall back against this individual, the group that he belongs to, and you know, whatever the, the churches and the infrastructure are at the time? So for those who do belong to the Coptic Church, who are seeing this and cast a vote for this president and this administration, this is what you voted for. I'd like to also say that the um, talking points that were done um, when they sent uh, the, uh, dep the Deputy Secretary of State, first of all, the deputy was sent, it wasn't the Secretary of State because something so blatant couldn't be directly pinned on the Secretary of State, so they sent the Deputy Secretary of State. And when these talking points were scrubbed, they weren't added information. It's not that they're refining the information. I think Mark Levin alluded to this. They didn't add things to correct the information. They took things out, lest they should be exposed or lest they should be 
you know, brought to the, to the Our table. time has come to an end. Thank you for watching the Coptic Cafe program uh, here on Nogos TV. Uh, and uh, I leave you with this message that we believe in the risen Christ and our actions here on earth matter. Uh, so please try to be ethical, to be tr try to be honorable. Uh, resist uh, the easiness of uh, behaving in a dishonest way or uh, in a dishonorable way because we have to give an answer just like everyone else who will give an answer when our Lord returns. You've been watching the Coptic Cafe program. Thank you for, your, for being here with us.